Hello everybody, this is Dino GTO and we're back yet again with another Louvre video. No, or Louvre replay I should say. So, I'm not sure where I'm going to release this particular game. Um, I'm, I'm really, I'm not, I'm, honestly I'm trying to guess when Wargaming is going to pull their finger out and put 9.18 out on Europe. So, if it doesn't come out, what the f... Did the teammate shoot that guy or what happened there? I don't know, it wasn't... Uh, I looked away from it there and I'm actually really not sure who shot. I assume it was probably some low caliber gun from over there. Right, um... But depending on when 9.18 comes out, I will obviously do a video probably on the day 9.18 comes out of still 9.17.1, but the day after I usually try and get a 9.18 replay up. But I still have a few replays I want to put up from 9.17.1 and then after that there are like... Honestly, I made a mistake in the original 9.17, or not 9.17, but uh, 9.16, where I had like 5 or 6 uh, games I had left to put up, but I forgot about them. And it was only when I was looking through the screenshots, I was like, fuck, I had a shit ton of games that I could put up. And then uh, I looked back and, yeah, I'd, I'd already updated my game client, so I couldn't use 9.16 anymore, which was, which was annoying to the least. So, yeah. Yeah, shit like that happens from time to time. So I'm I'm trying to this patch make sure I get all the games out that I have. Um while nine point seventeen point one is still the main patch. Um although I do hope nine point eighteen comes out sooner rather than later. I'm gonna make sure I record all the games I have stockpiled right now. Um beforehand, but they may be released after nine point eighteen comes out because of like it takes a while to render games. If you've ever if you've ever done a YouTube video, it takes a while to render games. Put them into the add in software takes ages and then getting them to actually render after you've done all the editing and stuff uh, is also really annoying so uh, yeah um I tend to get onto the game so yeah um so we're against a tortoise and a t10 here now i'm about to get a shit ton of spot and damage here and the reason for that is i have no idea where that shot went by the way i think it was like that was that was pretty much a ghost shell because it went straight at the t10 disappeared <laughs> it did i didn't even get like a critical head or something so it was annoying um so let's see I'm going to get a shit ton of spot and damage, uh, but the reason for that is, well, if you look at the, at the position I'm in right now, those guys there are all pretty much behind these bushes here to the to the enemies, so they aren't actually spotting these guys for themselves. But because I'm here, I'm getting all the spot and damage for these guys shooting these guys. So honestly, I didn't I, like. I'm not. I'm going to fully admit I didn't realize that was a thing. Uh, whenever I was playing this game, I didn't even think of it. It was only I only thought of it after I was watching the replay back, and I was just like, "Oh, that's the reason why I was." Sure. <laughs> and then I was just like, "Oh, dumb, should've known that." <laughs> so yeah, um, E seventy five. I decided to keep in track there because it's more important to have the E seventy five shot by more as many people as possible rather than doing one one three twenty alpha shot into him. So now there's the T ten and another T ten there. Uh, this T ten here has. He was so close to being killed by, by one ram there, but I have to make sure I kill him now because if I don't kill him, then, well, he will fuck me up because he was using the tap gun on that tank. Uh, that guy over there though, uh, it, I didn't realize it until after the shot here. He, he did 390 damage blocked for me, if that makes sense. Uh, I, I blocked 390 damage from him, that's how I know it was the BL9 and not the tap gun for that tank. So. I didn't realize at the time, I should just point that out, but um, yeah, that was the 390 alpha gun, not the 440 alpha gun, so he had nowhere near enough pen to pen me at that kind of angle, whereas the, it would have been kind of a 50-50 if it had been the top gun, so hmm. Um, this is going to be kind of an annoying part of the game for me, because, well, I'm just going to be kind of crap in terms of my ability to aim, for the most part, so let's see, um, I don't know why I took that shot. Uh, there's a couple of shots here I'm just looking at. And just, I'm, I'm watching back and just going, why would you take that shot? <laughs> because there's terrible shots. But I immediately notice on the map that the Panther Radiate spotted, and I immediately go for a shot on him. Because, well, if you don't know, Panther Radiate pretty much guaranteed damage. And this shot here is going to be more of a test or shot, because I cannot remember for the life of me uh, whether or not the 105mm gun on the Louvre is enough to pen that. And I tried it, and now I know for the future that you cannot pen the front armor of that thing from this kind of angle with the 105 gun. So yeah, that's good to know for the future. And here is the 110, and this is why the 110 stock turret sucks. Everything can pen the 110 stock turret. I don't like the T10 turret, which is the upgraded turret for the 110 very much, because I think it just look, uh, looks ugly. 
but it at least it has some armor on, on like that turret. That turret there is just crap in terms of armor. And that Tiger one just about managed to fall back fast enough for me for, for him to avoid me getting another shot at him. Uh, although I haven't actually panned him once, so that's annoying. <laughs> Tiger one pretty much the weakest armor tank uh, I've come across so far, and uh, I haven't panned a single shot on, which is annoying to say the least. And I am being very cautious here. I am falling back every time I see six hands come up. I fall back immediately because I don't want to be uh, killed. And that was really unlucky. If you didn't see that there, I fired at the 110, but the Tiger 1 was reversing, which meant the shot hit the Tiger 1 and bounced off. Uh, I think it hit like the roof of the turret on the Tiger 1, so that's the reason why it bounced. And I am going to remain up on top of this ridge line for a while because, well, Liva has an accurate gun. As you can see, because that was pretty good, pr pretty decent amount of range there, and I did manage to hit the scout, the scout tank pretty reliably. Now, I'm on 3,100 damage right now, 2,900 spotting, so this is a fucking amazing game. This is an ace tanker already, I'm pretty confident of that. So, and uh, there's a T30. This shot here, yeah, shit like that happens from time to time with any gun in the game. Uh, doesn't matter how accurate your gun is, shit like that just happens from time to time. Although, if I'm honest, I think Wargaming should kind of increase the accuracy, the accuracy difference between things like the Russians and things like the Germans, because I feel like the, the accuracy difference isn't really that great. So yeah, the Scout tank spotted, so I immediately go for him, get rid of him, because I know that thing could be annoying later in the game if he's still alive. So getting rid of him seemed like the best bet. Now, the T-30, I'm really not sure, honestly, what he was doing. Because if he had just remained sitting, uh, if, if you look at him now, in that position there, if he had remained in that position there, he would have been fine. No issues whatsoever, bunch of shots, because it's godlike turret. But because he keeps coming for forward far enough for me to or for everybody to get shots at him, and that was pretty unlucky. Um, because he keeps coming forward far enough to get for us to get shots at him, uh, as Hull in particular, he, he keeps he keeps doing that. He, he did he did that like three times. He kept coming forward far enough for us to be able to shoot his hull, and. I just kept looking at it going, why would you do that? We're in a T30, you have an amazing turret, why would you do that? And, yeah, I, I'm really not sure what his goal was really with that turret, because he kept coming forward just far enough for me to be able to, for everybody to be able to shoot his hull. So, yeah, it seemed a bit odd that he, that he would uh, choose to play a tank with an amazing turret like that. So, hmm. And, and, uh, it's not as if I, I don't think he was really pulling forward to be able to get like a shot like a really small angle on a tank or anything like that there because there two two seventy fives he was against so he wasn't going to paint anything um, if they were well angled so hmm, not really sure what the hell he was at there but yeah uh, this match is still going still two tanks left on the enemy team MX5100 and it's doing that really annoying thing it does sometimes where if you look at the map now MX5100 is within my render range circle but he, he never renders because it is just like if you don't know, these indicators here, I wish they would minimize the size of them so you have a more precise idea of like where they are on the, on the map because those markers don't really give you an accurate idea of like where they are because most of that marker is inside that rendering circle. This tank never never comes up on my screen. It's so goddamn, it, it's so fucking annoying. I hate how it's like that. Uh, honestly, if if I was going to mod something in the game, it would just be something to reduce the size of those things that are, just to make it a bit more pinpoint as to where they are. I reckon that would probably be considered uh, something giving you an unfair advantage. And honestly, yeah, I think about it probably would give you an unfair advantage, but honestly, if I was working, I would have like a slider to, de to determine how big those actual markers are. Like I, I think there was a glitch a while ago, like in one of the patches, where those things were reduced massively in, sta in size, and from like this size to being like half the size they currently are. And I've preferred that massively to what we have right now. So, yeah, it's 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 annoying, to say the least. So, SCRV one hundred and three, it has been spotted. He has gone into tr to uh, travel mode, and he's now going to speed away as, as fast as he can. Now, those things are are annoying to shoot at. But yeah, he, he gets behind these build, buildings, and this is probably my favorite shot of the game. I'm just trying to guess the lead. I fire the shot, and he gets inside my... Uh, and he just... Uh, his silhouette just appears, just as I fire the shot off. So, yeah, I was, I was pretty proud of that shot whenever I took it in the game. So, 4,400 damage, pretty much. Uh, 3,000 spotting, 1,800 damage blocked, and yeah, the, the MX-5100 is going to die, and I'm not going to get another shot off into him. But... 
yeah, that's just kind of shows you that BMX with, or not BMX, what am I talking about? Oh yeah, I'm talking about the last enemy tank on the enemy team. The Luva, it has the ability to actually go forward and be at the front lines these days, but it still has the ability to snipe to an extent. Um, like, well, as you saw there, um, I, I had about half, well, about 1700 of my damage was pretty much, or not 1700, but but 1500 of my damage was pretty much done at extreme range. So, it gives you an idea of like how accurate the gun is and how good it is at range. Personally, I person uh, personally I play at relatively close ranges, um, but this thing does have the ability to play at um, at longer ranges as well, which is part of what makes it kind of versatile. And the additional speed it has these days also makes it so that if you are sitting in extreme range, you can close the distance if you need to. So yeah, overall I'm, I I really like this tank. So yeah, and also something that she's mentioned. Um, I didn't realize it at the time when I was recording the first video, but the live video I put out a couple of days ago, that was that was played on the same day that I played this one, which caught me off guard when I when I, when I noticed it, because I know like I was looking at it in the replay file or in the uh, replay folder, and I just noticed that the game on I think it was Erlenberg. Um, I just noticed that I, I clicked on it just to see if it was the same game. It was the same game. I was like, huh, it's a weird coincidence because I forgot the, like this game came directly after that. But yeah. So, yeah, um, the pretty good game overall, f and I was really happy with the uh, with the results. So, let's go on to the results screen. Okay, so we are back with the results, and as you can see, this was a new tanker, and I finally, finally got my uh, second mark of excellence on the Luva. You have no idea how long I've been trying to get that. I've been trying to get that since before it got buffed. <laughs> so, I've been trying to get that since, I think... I think it was like September last year. Like that just gives you an idea of how long I've been trying to go for the second for the second mark of excellence. I just was having no luck with the old school Lova, but this one here I felt like I liked it enough that I really wanted to go for the second mark of excellence. And this game here, coming directly after the previous one that I uploaded, um, was finally the thing that got me into it. Was like I was so goddamn happy whenever I, whenever I saw I got the second the second mark of excellence because I've been going for it for so long. But yeah, um. So that was a, as I've mentioned, the second class, the second uh, mark of excellence, and the East tanker, and also I got a confederate in that game as well because I shot enough enemies to do that. I think you need to shoot at least six six enemies that you don't kill, so that means I shot like nine enemies total. I think. Let me just count: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I shot ten enemies total, but I didn't penetrate the tiger, so um, I'm not sure if that counts. Right, so. In terms of the team, uh, I came top of the team, 1,647 in base XP, 4,400 4, damage pretty much, I'm just going to round it up, saying that. Um, second highest damage in the game just after the STRV 103. Uh, let's see. And fired 25 shots total, 23 hits, 15 penetrations. Uh, penetration ratio is not the greatest in this game, but there were a couple of shots where I did tactically shoot people uh, in the tracks rather than shooting them. Um, in the uh, in their armor to actually penetrate them, uh, like the seventy five is a good example of that. I think there was another one as well, but I can't think of what it was off the top of my head. Okay, so um, in terms of total damage done, I got forty three, uh, forty four hundred total, but about nineteen hundred of that was done at really extreme range. Uh, eighteen hundred blocked uh, with my armor, eighteen hundred damage blocked by my armor, three thousand spotting damage as well. So. Yeah, that was a really solid game. Like, um, especially when you add the the bonus for being a premium tank, for bonus for being a premium tank, uh, that was over eighteen hundred XP by the end of that. So, yeah, that's pretty damn good in my opinion. So, yeah, um, I'm not sure when this video is going to come out because I don't really have time to sit and render it right now. So this will probably wind up coming out after nine point eighteen releases, providing nine point eighteen releases on like. If I had to guess, I would say probably Wednesday or Thursday. At least I hope it's Wednesday or Thursday, because I would rather it be sooner rather than later. But um, yeah, if it comes out on one of those days, then this will probably be out the week after, because I don't have time to render it right now. So yeah. Um, yeah, I think it was overall just a good game to watch, more than likely. <laughs> it was high XP. I'm not sure if it was great to watch, but yeah. Um, so thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.